come to these events every year? Yeah, it, it, I think it's a, a great opportunity to kind of refresh. At the end of the year, it's been a long year, a good year, but it's, it's neat to refresh, see the new things that are coming out for the new selling season, and uh, we wouldn't miss the, uh, the convention for anything. Well, there certainly seems to be an excellent turnout. This is the first day. It's maybe a couple of hours into this show. Right, right. I think the turnout is good. Um, and actually that was sold out and uh, so that is a challenge as business recovers more and more dealers are coming back and, and looking for ways to improve their business and uh, not everyone's able to come. Let me ask you about your obviously you feel strongly about Mohawk which is why you're aligned with them. Talk about what the company brings to you and maybe just their basic attitude and philosophy that appeals to you. Okay. We, we've been heavily aligned with Mohawk. I've been with uh, Barrington Carpet now for eight years. We were a charter member in the Floorscapes program, so at, that's a little over, I think, 12 years now. And so uh, as a charter member, we saw a lot of value in the program. We continue to see that today. Um, they're really taking us to the forefront of the, the new frontier, if you will, with the digital side of our business. It's something that we can learn a lot from. I think it is the future. Uh, we see it through their digital lead program. There are more and more people that aren't even coming to the stores. They are shopping online uh, with, with these wonderful websites that are out there and reaching out either through email to us or phone calls to us. And sometimes, like I said, they don't even come into the store. We set up an appointment and go out to them. Uh, a lot of people, dual income families, I think it's convenience. Um, and so, so the marketplace is changing. And, and Mohawk seems to be at the forefront of that and helping us understand that and take advantage of that as we move into the future. So the leads come from the website, your website, your Mohawk website? Yeah, it's, it's driven through key search words and things like that. They have a, a company that uh, Carol Cross runs, uh, this, this digital marketing company, and, and they're aligned with Mohawk. And, and we partner in this lead generation service, and we pay to be in, uh, a part of that. But it's basically pulling all that, the, those dollars and all that buying power in search that I couldn't do individually uh, to bring more and more qualified leads our way. Um, it's, it's, it's been a plus for us. It's in its infancy. Mohawk admits that, but it, it is getting better and better, and we look forward to actually someday having a person that would be assigned to handling nothing but those leads. And that's p panning out in terms of hard leads that you follow up on and gain sales from. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we've had instances where the customer doesn't even come in. We close the sale out in their home. Uh, and, and I think that, like I said, the, it, I don't think traditional shopping, people still want to touch, feel. I don't think that's ever going away, but it's an avenue of business. I think the millennials, the younger customers that are out there, it's a new way that we as maybe a little older need to get used to. Well, it seems to me that if you're selling in the consumer's home, you really have an advantage over them selling, over you selling them in your store. Yeah, I think traditionally they shop at, I think, two and a half stores before they make a buying decision. If, if you get an in-home appointment, the, the success rate, the close rate is significantly higher. We find it almost 100%. If they've, you know, taken the time to schedule that appointment in their home, in their comfort zone, they're in the, the buying zone. They're going to make a commitment, and we have a high success rate with that. Not a huge part of our business yet, uh, but we see that it's going to only grow. And that's mostly or pr primarily younger players? It seems to be. Oh, Dual-income families, you know, young professionals, things like that. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, I should ask you at the front end, just to describe Barrington, the type of business you do, how long you've been around, the size, your customer, that kind of thing. We're, we're a single site location. We, have, uh, uh, we do installations out of our Akron uh, headquarters in three states every day. Uh, we do a lot of builder work. It was originally founded uh, to service a very large builder, uh, but we've, we've grown and, and, and got very diverse in, in the fact that we do a lot of property management work now. We bid commercial work and do Main Street from small commercial jobs up to uh, six-figure jobs um, and anything in between. Uh, and retail is, is still an important part of our business. You know, it seems to me the bottom line as we go forward has been differentiation. How is Barrington different from the other people around the Akron market? Um, talk, talk about that as it relates to your store and what you try to do. 
I, I think it's really not what I try to do. It's, it's having the right people in, in place out on, out on the floor. It starts with our store manager and then the salespeople that are out on the floor. Uh, we, we have, uh, I think, that's the only thing that separates us, quite frankly. You can buy all of these products just about anywhere that you choose. Um, and and it's, I, I give the credit to our salespeople and the quality of their... their but there must be something, I mean, to get quality salespeople, obviously, you do something on the front end to get these people in the house, you do something to train them, and to have them do things in a way that you think is the better way to do it. We, we found opportunity, especially a few years ago when things got a little tougher, that there were people out in the marketplace looking for new opportunities, new, new uh, uh, work environments. And we, and we we took advantage of that, quite frankly. You know, uh, people that maybe were feeling a little underappreciated, uh, and we just give them the space to uh, come in, uh, you know, use our tools and and grow their business. I I tell them every day. You know, we we have three people on the sales floor. We have two outside salespeople. We're really running about five or six independent businesses under under our roof, and that's how we operate. So when people are interviewed, is it easy enough to find, I mean, I'll go into a restaurant or into a store and I'll say, now there's a person that wasn't born to be involved in customer service. And then there are people that seem to be born to be able to do that well. Do you see that or is that something that, uh, you know, I, I'm making up? No, I, I think you're right. People have to have a drive and, and a determination and a, and a, a real desire to want to help people. And, and, and then that the satisfaction, I think they see that completed project and, and they reap benefit from that. But it's, it's not for everybody. And, and the, we, we, we found, uh, before I came to, to, to Barrington Carpet, I was on the wholesale side of the business and actually was a supplier partner of Barrington Carpet. And so I knew the marketplace and I knew who these salespeople were and one by one, we've been able to bring them on board. Do you have sales meetings where you talk about technique and greeting customers and making them feel happy and so on? It, as far as that, no. We do have sales meetings where we'll have the vendors come in and do presentations on new products, especially things that we're introducing into the floor, onto the floor. Uh, and, and, and probably, you know, we could probably reintroduce that and have some of that. But these are, these are trained, seasoned people. Um, not that you can't learn something, you know, but no, our sales meetings are more generated to uh, the, the vendor and the product and totally understanding that, finding the value in that, understanding that for the customer. Let me ask you about in installation. I've been in the business 30 some odd years. I think the day I came in, they told me that installation was the biggest problem. I don't know that that's changed any. Talk about installation and bearing. Installation is our biggest challenge, and I don't think Barrington's unique to that. And, and uh, I spend a lot of my working week thinking about how we're going to grow our installation base. We use all subcontractor labor. We're currently at 46 crews, and I don't have enough. Uh, what's, what's starting to happen is uh, our retail business, we're getting a backlog on installation. We're normally we're able to turn it in a week to two weeks. Now it's, it's pushing out towards a month out of some of our salespeople's comfort zone. So much of our other business is predicated in the multifamily and builder where you have to hit a closing date, where you have to hit a move-in date for an apartment, that, that we have so much work out there, which is a good thing, uh, but it's going to get to the point where we're probably not going to have enough labor to do the work that we have. We'll have to actually probably slow down and, until we can build our labor force. So you're at a point if it's not costing you business, it soon will. Yeah, we're, we're actually looking at a, a bidding a, a larger builder right now, and our concern is for them, that we can service them. And so we're, we're at a point where we're evaluating our, our, our subcontractor base, and if we can't adequately service them, we're going we're gonna to tell them that. And it's the first time we've ever been in that position. So what are some of the options that, that you're considering? I mean, can you bring in people and train them? Or can you, I mean, do you work with a local... Um, the, the vocational training facility, or are there any options? Well, I've thought about that. I've talked to a couple other of my peers, and, and I think there are some uh, training opportunities out there. I think where I might approach it is at a local uh, uh, level with a, a, a Congress representative or something to see if there's some way that we can develop an apprentice program like you mentioned or some sort of training program in, in some of these high school uh, uh, programs that are out there. 
uh, there are so many kids going to high school, everything is prepped towards college. And, and we, in, in the industry and in the labor side, our uh, pool of installers is, is getting older. It's hard work, and there's not a lot of younger people coming up through the ranks. I think it's a great skill that you can make a, a good living at. It's very, very hard work, but we've got to start kind of at the grassroots and, and get it into trade school, or, or, you know, um, vocational programs is what I was trying to say in, at the high school level. And if we could find how do we start that. And I, to, to get it into education, I would think that it would have to come through state or uh, even federal representation on a local level. It's a problem, it seems, that it is universal. Everybody in this industry, everybody in this room seems to have that same problem. Yeah, I've talked to, again, a lot of people, and we are not unique. It is a problem. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. Um, and it's our challenge to look towards the future and what can we do to turn that around. What's ahead for Barrington? Do you see, you mentioned you were a single store operation. Do you see that changing? Do you see adding things that you don't have now or taking new directions? We're actually going to probably venture out into a satellite location, smaller footprint than what we have now. We have a 15,000 foot facility with a showroom and warehouse in Akron. We're looking at a couple of opportunities, one to the north of us in Cleveland and one in the West Virginia area where we can uh, get to the, some of the builder business that we have quicker and maybe capitalize on some of the local labor uh, versus traveling like we do now. All 46 of our crews travel. They travel up to, like I said, three states every day. I really appreciate, Greg, you spending some time with us. Very interesting. And uh, I, I would ask you more about the show, but it j just started, That's and you probably haven't a chance to see any of you know, very much at this point. Well, thank you very much. It was good talking to you. We'll Thanks. talk to you soon. All right. Craig, Craig Phillips, Barrington Carpet out of Akron, Ohio. This is Talk Floor TV.